USA Scotland game wrapped up final score 42 to 7 Scotland wins and overall I feel that the game was not the best rugby that we've ever seen in our life right this is the, my first time actually watching the US side the 15 side and I know they pulled a lot of players from MLR who have playoffs coming up this week and the side didn't really look gelled cohesive it looks like they haven't played together and had a lot of experience with one another and the Scottish side had the most notable name that came over was Duhan van de Merwe, and he scored the first try of the game putting Scotland up 7-0 and I'll go through the entire score line and I'll also switch screens and look at the stats and all that entire breakdown but just the initial thoughts that I had was that Scotland I had them winning pretty big this game my initial prediction was that Scotland would, would win by 40 plus just because of watching them in Six Nations I knew how strong a side they were and there weren't notable names like Finn Russell was is taking the summer off so he didn't make this tour with Scotland but I still felt like they were the stronger side especially from watching them in Six Nations and seeing them compete very well in Six Nations I know there were times where Scotland was inconsistent earlier in this season but I feel that with the team and the firepower that they have as an international team and as a nation that they would blow the doors off USA and you know the scoreline is what I expected it to be but the overall play was very sloppy it was inconsistent a lot of turnovers just really felt like the Scotland side played down to the American level. Although America is a tier one nation, we have a lot of funding and resources, maybe not in the rugby side of things. And there's still a lot of research and exploration I have to do on that as far as like understanding the players and the, the USA organization a lot better. I feel that Scotland played down to the, I feel like you, excuse me, I feel like USA is like a tier two in rugby as far as like the rugby side of the nation is what I was trying to say. And Scotland being a tier one nation in rugby, I felt that they were just gonna completely blow the doors off of the USA. But what I feel is that Scotland played down to the USA level. They were not playing consistent. They weren't playing cohesive in, in the early goings. And they allowed America to stay in the game for longer than they should have and made the American side look you know, more dominant or even better than they truly are. And I feel like Scotland really could have done themselves a, a service and really just made the score line um, just out of this world, right? But I feel like what happened is that there were a lot of knock-ons, a lot of penalties, a lot of careless mistakes that Scotland allowed to happen and just kept the game closer than it needed to be, especially for as long as they did. It just felt like not the best rugby that I've seen as far as um, watching like very solid test matches this summer and looking at the, the Six Nations game earlier this year. And, you know, that's that's my initial thought process of it. Looking at the USA side of the game, I feel that the US side, it, it didn't look really strategic. It looked like they were just trying to make plays happen. There was no strategy to the sets that they were trying to do. They had some good players, like AJ McGinty is a solid player. I think that he did a fantastic job. And, you know, the overall American side looked good. They didn't look as well polished as I would expect or like to see. There was a lot of gaps being opened and you know, I cannot take credit for this. Someone on my stream, they were mentioning the problem with the American side. They said their set pieces looked slow, like they were, their speed to ball wasn't fast and they were leaving a lot of gaps open on the defensive side and not taking advantage of the Scottish side when there were gaps available because they did not have the speed to ball. And so I appreciate that insight and that analysis um, from the live stream because it is true. There the speed looked a lot slower than I'm used to seeing, especially from high level rugby. And the tackling on the American side wasn't that good. There were times where I feel that it should have been more dominant in the tackling side, but it looked like a lot of missed tackles, a lot of weaker tackles, you know, just not just not the type of rugby, the high level rugby that I'm used to seeing, especially when I'm looking at how Six Nations turned out, all of the nations involved in that, looking at like South Africa, New Zealand, and seeing the way they play rugby, it looks just like a completely different speed of of the game and you know it's it's gonna be like that the american side is still a developing nation in the world of rugby but you know there's a lot of gaps that have to be filled for us to be a dominant force even like a a competitive force by the 2027 world cup and even the 2031 world cup here in america and so there's a lot of things that I see that's still unstructured and needs to be polished. And I, you know, I'm just gonna do more do, due diligence and learn more about the USA 15 side of rugby, the players they have, the resources that are available, and really just see how they're continuing to develop. And I know there's a, the MLR team, Anthem is that 
is our like our feeder team that's going to be that that side that's building up that cohesion building up the players their skill set and they're going to be the team that's eventually going to be our you know 2031 world cup team and it's good that the mlr has that farm team that they're building up and getting that experience so when we get into test matches like this against a team like scotland that we have a competitive game and i know the last time uh we beat scotland was I, what was it 2016 or something like that and please correct me if i'm wrong i always love and appreciate when you all correct me for it and also fill me in on pieces that i maybe missed or overlooked on these matches so yeah please let me know if i if i missed anything but that was when uh will hooley and the team they upset scotland because scotland missed that that kick and then usa won that game and since then i was following Rus rugby a little bit then because they they highlighted rugby in america at that time it seems since then there's been along the line a massive fall off in the u.s side of rugby it seemed like we were trending in the right direction on the american side of our 15s but since then being 2024 now there's been a huge fall off in the in the program and i'm not sure what that is i'm not sure if it's funding or what level of interest or players the, the the players getting into the system or lack thereof but i'm interested to understand where that fall off has been because it felt like we were on a good trajectory and eventually just tapered off in that point i'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that one um as well but overall i feel like it was an all right game it wasn't the best rugby i've ever seen from both sides scotland i feel like they played down you know several notches from where, I, where i've seen them play you know they just allowed the game to be closer than it was and even just looking at the you know, the score line you know duhan van de Merva scored within the first five minutes hastings got the conversion ashman scored in the 18th minute hastings with the conversion there was a yellow card on america from uh, Anu Anunu, I sorry if I messed the name up. Ashman scored again at the 25th minute from Scotland, and then Boney scored for America at the 31st minute, making the game five to 21 with Scotland winning. Um, McGinty had that conversion. Ashman again at the 42nd minute. Horn at the 49th, and Ferguson, Fagerson, excuse me, at the 73rd minute to make the game 42 to seven with all the conversions being completed. So overall scotland really put it on america and um, they, i feel like they if had they played more consistent and had less mistakes it the scoreline could have really been outrageous like when they played in canada the week prior so let me switch screens and go over to some of the stats of this game so even as looking at the stat line we see the penalty goals both had zero six tries to one for scotland and the advantage zero drop goals for both 120 carries to 70 carries scotland with that advantage four line breaks for scotland 14 turnovers lost 15 lost for scotland and that's where i'm talking about where it was a, a, a sloppy match on both sides where it wasn't the cleanest rugby that we've ever seen you know the advantage goes to scotland with seven turnovers one over four for america the territory we're in looking at the breakdown 53 percent was on the american side and 47 percent on the scottish side so we see that the majority of the game was happening in the American territory. Possessions in the last 10 minutes, 68% went to America, 32 to Scotland, and, but the overall possession time was 63% for, for Scotland and 37 for America. So it shows the time of possession and uh, Scotland mostly had the ball in hand and was really setting the pace and setting the tone of this match. Looking at set plays, 11 scrums for America, eight to Scotland. So we had, even with that, with the 19 scrums that were done, 88% of the scrum wins went to Scotland over the 82% for America. There were 21 lineouts for Scotland, 10 to America. Um, America actually did good. They won the lineout battle 90% to 86%. So that's really, really good. Uh, restarts received six to three, and then 100% of the restarts were won by Scotland. So they have the advantage in that respect. And then just looking at the attacking, we had 154 passes for Scotland. They won, Scotland won the entire attack 154 to 73, 120 ball carries to 70, 154 meters post contact me to uh, 112 meters one post contact and four line breaks so when they have that that much attack it's sort of hard you know like to to win a game because america's playing on their heels and the scoreline dictates that right 42 to 7. turnovers this is where it was really sloppy 
seven turnovers one to four for scotland and then turnovers lost 15 and 14 so that's a lot of a lot of turnovers um for this match penalties 16 on the american side 16 penalties one yellow card only eight penalties conceded by scotland and then looking at the tackles america had a lot of tackles because they didn't have the ball in hand the entire time 141 tackles made to compared to the 108 by scotland 16 tackles missed and that's where i'm talking about where the tackling wasn't effective it wasn't dominant on the american side compared to the eight tackles missed on scotland so the completion rate was 90 percent to 93 percent with scotland winning that advantage and then total kicks one was 24 to 16 and the kick to pass ratio is a 164 and to compare to the 14.6 for America. So just looking at the stats, it really dictates the storyline for me. And the, the one that just really stands out the most is the turnovers um, going to how sloppy the game was overall. So it's it's nice to see this, this stat breakdown. And I have to give a massive shout out to Rugby Pass for having these uh, these stats because I really love seeing and it gives me like the, the full context and, and structure and breakdown of the game on how things ended up as far as the statistic breakdown. And it just really helps me analyze the game a lot better and uh, you know goes through my thought process and seeing how everything works within this game and how these matches turned up so it's interesting to see the stat breakdown compared to what i was visualizing and watching in this game and like i said not the best rugby that we've seen all, all year but i feel that you know america has to keep on growing as a nation we have to keep on building our pipeline from grassroots all the way to the professional level whether that's having more high school teams or club teams at the high school level more access to that more access at the college level to having fully funded teams at the university level like we do at the college football level you know teams like in within the mlr like anthem that is that are building that professional squad that we can prepare and put together a solid 15 side so overall not the best game it was fun to watch it was good to see the turnout in washington for for the match there was you know it wasn't a sold out stadium but it was a good turnout from what i was looking at from the spectator view which is nice to see so hopefully it continues in a, in a solid trajectory and it's nice to play against tier one teams like scotland and get that experience and get that field time against bigger nations to really build up the fandom build up the anticipation for these world cups and you know get the support behind the american rugby team which will be nice to see but i want to know your thoughts on this one crew overall a good test match nice to get the the field time and get the experience against a good scotland side scotland i feel like like i mentioned several times they didn't play the quality rugby that i'm used to used to seeing them play it feels like they played down a few notches you know but i, I feel like we're gonna see a better scottish side once they're playing you know better tier one teams as we go forward crew but i would love to hear your thoughts on this one and um, let me know if i missed anything or had any oversights i always love hearing your thoughts and your analysis on this game as well and if you haven't already in our descriptions below be sure to drop into our discord where we have offline rugby chat talk about life family rugby whatever have you and i put all the announcements for everything that's upcoming crew i love you i appreciate you and we'll catch you on the next video always stay laser focused on your dreams and your vision and remember that you're in control much love peace